Welcome to Social We Media, straight talk about social multimedia. And I am real excited today because today we are joined by a very special guest, Richard Krawcheck, who is known as Mr. Blueprint. You'll learn why in a moment. He is the author of several books and courses such as Ultimate Success Blueprint, Ultimate Small Business Social Media Blueprint, Ultimate Small Business Marketing Blueprint, and Ultimate Leadership Blueprint, among several others. Richard also co-starred in a follow-up movie to The Secret called Pass It On. He is a human potential expert and considered by many as a thought leader in the fields of personal and business development. Richard is the founder and president of Success Now International, a personal and business development training company. Richard's co coaching and five-star programs guide executives, small business owners, entrepreneurs, corporations, and nonprofits how to achieve maximum results by properly utilizing their existing resources. Make sure you have a pen and paper because Richard is here now to reveal some of the secrets on how you can properly use social media to give you fame and fortune. In fact, I'll be taking plenty of notes myself and I cannot wait to hear this myself because I am really excited to have welcome, welcome Richard to this call today. And I have to tell you, Richard and I have been friends for a very long time and I am constantly learning from Richard. So welcome Richard. Thanks for having me, Carly. I always am excited to have you because I am constantly learning new and exciting things, especially about social media and many other things. So, you know, I would love for you to share with everybody many things, among many, you know, you have this wonderful title of Mr. Blueprint, and I just love this nickname. How did you come up with this? That's a good question, Carly. As a matter of fact, I get that almost all the time. Well, first of all, if you look at my last name, uh, K-R-A-W-C-Z-Y-K, it's like, can I buy a vowel, please? So Blueprint is a lot easier to spell than my last name. And it kind of reminds me, it all goes back to my childhood. Uh, I grew up in a very, very small town about 30 miles northwest of Chicago uh, called Lake in the Hills, Illinois. Um, population 5,000 when I moved away back in the, uh, in the early 80s. And the good thing about living in a small town is that everybody knows everybody. The bad thing about living in a small town is that everybody knows everybody. Uh, all, jokes, all jokes aside, um, living up and growing in a, in a small Midwest town gave me some down-to-earth values that I still carry to this day. Now, I remember when I was about 12 years old, the summer, I, I remember it very distinctly. I had a very, very uh, big life-shifting experience. And we lived a little bit on a hill, and at the bottom of the hill on our street, uh, there was a vacant lot. And all of a sudden, one day, these trucks started pulling up. These pickup trucks, they, they pull out the, uh, you know, the hatch and things like that in the back, and all these people were gathering around it, and they're looking at these rolls of paper. And then they would go about their work for the day, measuring things out and things like that. Well, after about a week or so, you know, curiosity got the best of me. Now, keep in mind, uh, when I graduated high school, I was six foot tall, 135 pounds. I was so skinny, I had to run around the shower to get wet. I actually think somebody wrote that in my yearbook. So when I was 12 years old, I was even tinier. So I marched down to this job site. And I'm like, who's the guy in charge here? And this, this gruff old guy smoking a cigar, yeah, me, kid, what do you want? I go, well, you know, I've been kind of watching you for about the past week or so, and you do the same thing every day. Everybody meets in the morning, look over these rolls of paper, do your, do your work, and then at the end of the day, you look at the rolls of paper again. I go, what the heck are you guys looking at? He goes, well, that's a blueprint. I go, I'm 12 years old. I didn't know. I go, well, what's a blueprint? He goes, well, it's like this, kid. <laughs> he goes, the builder wants us to build this house specifically for the client. And if we don't do everything within a fraction of an inch, the doors may not close, the air conditioning may not work, and if the foundation isn't set right, the whole house can come tumbling down around you. That's how important a blueprint is. And I said, well, wait a minute. If, if there's a blueprint to build a house, a car, a radio, yeah, we had transistor radios back then, if you remember that. Go to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. if you want to find one. Um, there's got to be a blueprint be successful in life. And so it took me 30 years to develop this framework called the Elate system, which I'll cover in a little bit. And 
you can use this elite system to become very, very successful and have a lot of impact and help a lot of people in social media. Now, unlike half the people on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn, I am not a social media expert. <laughs> Everybody claims to be an expert in social media. All I am is a businessman who's figured it out to help grow my business by helping other people and engaging with thousands and thousands of people from all over the world. And so that's what I bring to you today, Carly. Now, I would love to hear more about your late system. And it's, I know that you talked about it before and you said it brings joy and happiness into your business and personal life. So could you share about your personal late system? Yeah, the elate system, the definition of the elate system is in the name itself. Uh, New World Dictionary says elate is to bring enthusiasm, joy, and hope. I mean, who wouldn't want enthusiasm for their social media campaign? Uh, you don't want to be a Debbie Downer on social media. Wah, wah. I mean, nobody likes those kind of people. So we're using the elate system for social media. And the elate system, let me, let me go through you with you uh, one more time, and it's you can tell that Carly and I have spoken quite a lot because she knows what the elate system is and the definition of it. So Carly and I have a very, very good relationship. Now, uh, as you know, Carly, I am a public speaker. I travel all over the world. And one of the places I love speaking at is in San Francisco. It kind of re it has a cool vibe to it. It kind of reminds me of a West Coast version of New York City. And, and, and about two miles outside the coast of of San Francisco is a place called Alcatraz Island. Now for decades that was Alcatraz held the worst of the worst criminals. They held people as, as captives as a, a Machine Gun Kelly, Al Capone, my Chicago peep. Um, not that we're friends because he's dead and he's a gangster and I'm not. But uh, you know and, and in Alcatraz Island they had the best of the best security guards because you weren't allowed to carry any weapons on Alcatraz Island. And so let's just say if somebody escaped, they'd have to overrun the security guards, the best of the best in the world. They'd have to climb over this huge fence and then swim two miles in cold, choppy, shark-infested water to make it to shore. To say the least, there were never any confirmed escape of Alcatraz. So uh, right now there is an, a prison that's even more solid than Alcatraz Island, except it doesn't have any bars on the cells, doesn't have the best of the best security guards on the face of the planet, and you're free to, any, you're free to leave anytime you want. And that's the, that's the prison of your brain. You see, we convince ourselves in social media that we can't talk to certain people. Well, guess what? You can. You could talk to almost anybody on social media. And you can actually rebrand yourself in as little as 21 days on social media. So let's just say uh, you're switching fields or you're looking for a job and you want to use social media for, to, to land that dream job. You can use social media to do that. And you know you can rebrand yourself in as little as 21 days. I've seen people do it as, as, as little as a week. But you need to get some traction. So it takes about three weeks. Um, so the escape your mental prison, that's the E of the elate system. Can you see how that can relate, how the elate system can already elate, relate to social media, Carly? Oh, absolutely. I think it's so important, and especially in branding. And that's one of the things I love about you is you really do get how important social media is, and you get how important it is to get a brand that is important and how important rebranding is. I'd love to hear the rest. Okay. Well, imagine trying to build a house. Okay, you go to the builder and say, well, uh, let's put up a board right over there. Well, how high do you want it? I don't know about this high. You know, let's put up another board right over there. Well, how high do you want that? Oh, about this high. And by the time the builder is done building your house, it looks like the house of horrors. Okay, because, it, you know, all the boards are like, because they're not, they're not measured the right way. And the same thing that happens with your social media. You know, you need to lay out your social media blueprint because if you don't do that, if you fly by the seat of your pants, you're going to be all over the place. Now, I'm a former investment bank, and I've seen I don't know how many business plans, marketing plans over the past few decades, and people run their, their business and their social media kind of like from the, they're shooting from the hip. You know, if you treat your business like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. If you treat your business like an actual business, it will pay you handsomely. So as you develop your social media campaign, reach out to people 
like Carly and myself and the influencers in your industry, find out what they're doing. And if it works, do it in your way. You don't have to, one of my sayings I've been saying for decades is why reinvent the wheel when you could just change a tire. If something already works, do the exact same thing. You don't have to be Michelangelo to develop a social media campaign for your brand. It's just that simple. I love that you said that so many people are attempting to do things on their own and they're not looking to other people to see how they're doing it. And it always takes a team. People are always attempting to do things, again, I'm going to say it again, by themselves. Look to people to joint venture with. Look to people that have done it successfully. Go find out how they've done it. And like you said, don't reinvent the wheel. Go find out how they did it and join them. Join their programs. You know, JV with them, joint venture. Collaborate with them. Don't go trying to do something all by yourself. And then you fail and then you get frustrated and then beat yourself up. Go find people that have done it well and then go join them. <laughs> it's like, why are you beating yourself up and doing something that's not correct? And I don't like to use that word exactly, except, you know, as you said, don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah, you, can, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, but you can change the tire, which means if um, you see Carly online doing something or, or myself doing something online and you kind of like it, it's like, yes, but it's not really my personality. Well, guess what? You can change it up to your personality, but this, as long as the foundation is still the same, you know, you, you don't want to be Carly. You don't want to be me. You want to be you. So in social media, you know, why reinvent the wheel when you can just change a tire, you know, but you need to lay out your personal social media blueprint. So we have escape your mental prison, lay out your social media blueprint. And what you talked about, Carly, goes great in the elite system for A, which is access specialized knowledge. Now keep in mind, if um, having general knowledge would give you financial wealth and visibility and branding, the teachers in our world would be the most brilliant, most um, highly paid people in the world. But unfortunately they're not. That's general knowledge. When you need to specialize knowledge, let's just say you got a degree and you got, even went further and got your MBA. That is specialized knowledge. But that won't show you social media. You need social media specialized knowledge, which is why you're listening and watching to this program. You know, that's why you're following Carly. Carly, you're brilliant at this stuff. So um, your cloud score, I think, is out of a score of 100, I think you're at 251, <laughs> you know, out of a score of 1 to 100. So, I mean, you're like all over the place. So access specialized knowledge. Follow people like Carly. Okay, follow the leaders in your industry, and we'll go into how to find those leaders a little bit later on in this program. But you need to access specialized knowledge, because general knowledge will only get you so far you need to access specialized knowledge. Now, T in the elite system is take massive inspired action. You have to think for yourself, and, and think for a moment here, why am I doing social media? Okay? Well, thank you. Th let me ask you this one question. Let's just say you want to lose weight, okay? And you're like, oh, yes, I want to look good in about 90 days. Well, okay, that may motivate you. But if you say, listen, I need to lose weight in 90 days because I have a wedding, I'm getting married, and I don't want my grandchildren to say, hey, Richard, how many chins are you wearing on your face? You know, I don't want that, <laughs> that level of stress. You know, so that would motivate me a little bit more as opposed to, yes, I need to lose weight for whatever reason. So you have to be emotionally attached to why you're doing what you're doing. So when you take massive inspire action, it's actually inspired and not just taking action because anybody can do busy work. Anybody can be busy most of the day and not get anything really productive done, but you feel good about yourself up until you lay in bed at night and say, what the heck am I doing? I'm not to where I should be. I need to work a little bit smarter. Okay, so you need to take massive inspired action. So, so Carly, what do you think so far of the access specialized knowledge and take massive inspired action? I think it's really important. I mean, I think I, think I love acronyms a lot because people can relate to acronyms. When you have actual letters that mean something, people actually relate to them more. And I think a lot of times that really helps people to actually follow through with things. So I actually think it's really important to have something that is in a system that people can follow. 
And that's what I love about you. You always have, you always come up with these really great acronyms, and you also come up with really great programs. And I think you and I have bantered back and forth many times. I, I, one of the things I love about interviewing you, or, or just our friendship in general, is we can go down the rabbit hole in conversations because we can really get into these acronyms and discussions and programs and really put out their quality value for people, quality material that people can really take massive inspired action. Yeah, and, and you have I have, have done interviews before. We don't agree on everything because we all have certain styles. So that's like saying, well, um, I don't want to be in the personal development business because Tony Robbins is there. Well, that's a Tony Robbins voice. Your voice is much different based on your perspective and your life experiences. Okay, everybody's going to be different. So, but take the strategies that Carly does, follow those to the leather because Carly, you are like everywhere on social media. I can't avoid you. I Google you and it's like the, the first two billion pages on Google is all Carly Alyssa Thorne. So I'm like going, how the heck does she do it? Uh, I'm, I'm very good at business. Again, I'm not a social media expert like Carly is. I'm just a business owner who got it right who figured it out and that's what I'm showing you from my perspective from a business perspective whether it be marketing or branding uh, or, or whatever the case may be that's just my perspective now the cool thing that Carly you and I talk a lot about this and that is and you have actually something coming up here in the very near future with this and that is extending your heart and learning about the power of giving and that's the last E in the late system It's extend your heart and learn the power of giving because you know you have to give before you receive the more you give the more re you receive on, on a social media campaign you know what charities are you working with what charities are supporting your social media campaign and what I mean that is uh, people will support you if you support them uh, I'm an author a best-selling author and in my next book I have a portion of the proceeds of my book going to Habitat for Humanity because I think that is a very very good cause uh, where I'm based in Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm hooked up and I'm on the board of directors of a charity, a nonprofit in town that helps autistic children. You know, because so, uh, my son was borderline autistic when he was uh, when he was about two years old. So I mean, there's certain things that you attach to, and the more you give, the more you receive. The more love you give out to your social media charities. Uh, uh, in your local area or even national, people are going to notice you and say, "Hey, listen, you know, we love what you're doing with social media. Would you like to sit on our board of directors?" Now, it's great for you to sit on a, a board of directors of a nonprofit. It takes maybe about one hour a month of that uh, for a board of directors meeting, and you get a lot of good out of it. You get a lot of uh, it kind of fills up your heart. And it can also fill up your wallet if you really know what you're doing. Now, I'm not saying do social media. Um, uh, do charities just just to line your pockets? There are plenty of famous people, plenty of rich people that work with charities that make sure there's no fan, uh, no photo crew around. They don't want any paparazzi because they do this out of the out of the goodness of their heart, not because it helps their brand. Okay, so do it because it feels good, not because you're going to get something out of it. Will you get something out of it? Absolutely, but don't do it for that reason. So we have the elite system. Escape your mental prison. Lay out your social media blueprint. Uh, access specialized knowledge. Take massive inspired action and extend your heart and give. That is the elite system and how it relates to social media. And it's very important to give and do things. Over, for example, what he's talking about is um, December eighth. We're Richard and I and and many others. We go to nursing homes and people that are bed bound and we sing over the holidays and it's a beautiful thing to do and and basically when you give of your heart and you give in general without any expectation of return you're giving because you choose to give for no other reason you do get you you your heart fills because you're actually giving to people just because you want to and then the thing is you're naturally filling your heart anyway just because you're giving and it's just a beautiful thing to do, and I encourage everybody over the holidays to give to people that don't don't necessarily have family around them or can't be in a situation where they're getting the love that you're giving. So I encourage everyone to do that. And I also, what Richard was talking about when he said that me and him don't necessarily always agree, understand that it's a beautiful thing to be able to think beyond the box. There is no box, and that 
we are all, even one sentence, 20 people can read the sentence and every single person is getting a different, unique perspective. Be open to all points of view because guess what? When you do that, you're going to learn volumes. So that's a great thing that Richard and I have. He can have one opinion, I can have another. But guess what? We're both constantly learning from each other. And I really encourage everybody to open your eyes and your ears and just be willing to learn from others because you'll get so much more out of life. So now, the whole, now the whole perspective thing is great, Carly, except when you call the IRS with your tax questions and you get 10 different answers to the same question. <laughs> so perspective is nice except when it comes to your taxes apparently. Um, yeah, we all have different voices. You have your own voice. Carly has her voice. I have my voice. What you need to do is think of yourself like an onion. You need to peel the way all the different layers of the onion that you have. Find your true authentic self. And then once you find your true authentic self, then you can grow from there. Because I know a lot of people that say, well, I'm still looking to find myself. Well, first of all, look in the mirror. There you are. But uh, having said that, um, once you, most people don't know really who they are. I mean, honestly, they really don't. They really don't, because we're all influenced by by the perspective of others, and how whether it be the media, social media, TV, newspapers. I think they're still around. I think there's five or six magazines left around. Uh, I'm joking, obviously. Um, but we're all bombarded by everybody's perspective and, and we're shaped by everybody else's perspective. But what we need to do is find out what we have deep down in our soul, in our heart, find our authentic self and use social media to project your message. And if you're saying, well, I don't know if people are going to like my message. Well, I don't know if I'm going to win the lottery, but if you don't play, you're not going to win. You can't win the game if you don't get in the game. You'd be surprised. How many people think the exact same way you do, but you don't know it because you don't put your actual authentic views out there, your perspective out there? People will be attracted to you. I guarantee it. And then by using some of Carly's techniques, you can use your authentic self to totally blow everything out on social media and get your message to the masses and get a, a, a mad group of raving fans that are just going to love your stuff. What I want to add to what he just said it is vitally important is you do need to stretch yourself and put yourself out there and you never know who is out there who needed to hear exactly what you said at that very given moment. So you have to be willing to put yourself out there because there's always someone that is literally seriously waiting to hear exactly what you have to say. And what I want to now go to is what are your favorite platforms? What are some of the platforms that you think that are really important to be on in social media today? Well, honestly, I think it all depends on where your market is. Now, if your market is business to business, obviously LinkedIn is a very, very great network for you. And there's a lot of people that are on LinkedIn that are not on Facebook. They think it's all a bunch of BS. They don't like to do that tweety thing, you know, on Twitter. That's what they, that's what they call it, people on LinkedIn. And um, so that would be a great platform for business to business if you're really looking to build your business network. Now, if you want to hit the 13 to 22 year olds, then you go to Snapchat. You know, that's another network. If you want to get big in the music scene, then you go to MySpace. So it really all depends on what your market is. You need to find out exactly where the eyeballs are at because otherwise you have a big billboard and you're doing social media and you don't know if anybody's seeing it, you can't measure it at all, okay? It's like putting a, a billboard out there on the side of a freeway to advertise a business. Well, that's just a shotgun approach. What you need to do is have a very, very finely tuned, laser-targeted approach to who your market is. If your market is to dog owners that are uh, German Shepherds or, or Golden Retrievers, well, where are the people that are looking for dog training that have Golden Shepherds? Where are they looking? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Google Plus? You need to figure out where people are. You don't have to do a shotgun approach to be big in every single network. You just have to find out what people want and see that they get it. Find um, where the eyeballs are. Like for me, I do a lot of inspirational stuff on Instagram. And going through what Carly just said, building onto that, I get plenty of messages from people on Instagram commenting, commenting saying, you know, that's exactly what I needed to hear at this moment. And I don't know, I put this out there because I'm, I'm, I, I do Instagram for my authentic self. I'm, I'm motivational, I'm inspirational, that's what I do. 
professional and personal and business development. Um, so that's where your thing is. And obviously Instagram is a very, very huge network. Uh, you can only talk in pictures, but I think they're going to come out with instant messaging here pretty soon. That's the rumor for Instagram uh, for private messages. We'll see what that happens with that. I think it'll probably happen because they're owned by Facebook. So, and they have their whole platform that they've already built. So Facebook is not reinventing the wheel. They're just changing the tire. They're just taking an existing network, changing the tires to fit with what they're doing, and it's going to blow out Instagram even further further. Um, so to answer your question, Carly, that there is no uh, actual platform that you must be on. Uh, I would also, well, what I can do, I was going to cover this a little later, but I can cover this now, Carly. It's uh, finding out where your influencers are, because this is how you influence an influencer. So if, um, let's just say Bob Smith is big in the dog training market, okay? He's like the guru, uh, the big influencer in dog training. Well, what you do is find go to go to places like Clout or Cred, Clout K L O U T dot com or K R E D dot com. Find out where Bob Smith's networks are, because if he's got fans, again, why reinvent the wheel if you could just change the tire? So if you find out where the influencers are at in your field, then that's the networks you should go to. Those are the platforms you need to be on. Again, the teeny bopper market, Snapchat's obviously a no brainer. Uh, LinkedIn for business to business and so on and so forth. But find out where the find out where your leaders are, the influencers in your field, and go to those networks. Well, then if people are actually cons now, here's the other thing though: if people do care about their scores, if they are on clout, they are going to need to be on certain specific networks. So if they do care about that, especially if they're authors or right. if they're speakers, they are for spe specifically for clout the big networks they do need to be focused on is going to be Google, Facebook, and Instagram is a big, Instagram is actually helping now with um, their cloud scores and Twitter. So then, yep. then that's a whole nother gamut of, of things because you know, those are the things that count towards your cloud score heavily, which is Google, Twitter, Facebook, and actually Instagram is actually helping a lot now because uh, it is such a visual platform, like you said, and it's tied to Facebook now. Right. My perspective on social media is I don't do social media for metrics. I do social media to find out who my market is and attach with them. If I get a high score on some metrics from credit or cloud, that's all great. You know, metrics won't put money in your bank account. You know, being in front of the crowd that you need to be. And, and I, th I think if, again, this is my own personal opinion, Carly, is if you put your message out there to the people that want your message and need your message, all that metric stuff just takes care of itself because we, we both know that, you know, uh, these metrics can be manipulated one way or another. So I don't really look at those scores too much. I mean, sure, they're nice, but I don't do, I, I don't post on Instagram or my Facebook page at the Mr. Blueprint, you know, just for a cloud score. I do it to, cause that's where my eyeballs are at. So that's my own personal opinion on, on cloud and cred. No, and and I absolutely do agree with you. If you are someone that puts out quality content, if, right. and, and if you're doing the right things, you organically are going to get the scores anyway if you're doing the things properly. And yes, things can be manipulated if you're doing things what I what I personally call black hat tactics, which I think mm -hmm. are personally something that I personally view as unethical, and I personally choose to not live my life that way. So. And I believe if you are putting out quality content are where you're choosing to be because your your tribe or your fans or your followers are following you because they love what you're putting out, you organically are going to get that anyway. And I choose personally like you do. Um, I do things because I love to do them, not because of a score. So I agree. Yeah, I mean, there are plenty of people that I see on Instagram. I'm, I'm pretty big on Instagram. And um, with Instagram, I see plenty of people that have the high cloud scores I just put pictures that they find um, um, through um, through um, um, no royalty sites where they just put pictures just to put pictures. It's not really what they do, but they put pictures out there, let's just say, of landscapes or, or this and that, some, some beautiful things, but they're not artists. You know, they're, they're social media managers and just putting out just pictures out there just to put out pictures, and I think that's not being authentic. I think that's just you know, way of working the system. Uh, I, I doubt their followers are there. Um, but, you know, everybody has their own perspective. My perspective is 
you know, find out where your people are, find out where your tribes are, what Carly says, find out where your raving fans are that really love your Kool-Aid and drink your Kool-Aid on a daily basis, and feed that hunger with great, great content. Again, I do motivational, inspirational stuff, so a lot of the stuff you'll see on my Facebook fan page, on my Instagram, is all inspirational stuff. That kind of goes with what I do. But I just don't like people that just put crap out there just to put pictures on there. I, I just don't think that's authentic at all. I also personally, is, as you know, I, I love flowers. I, I do books with flowers. I, I personally like taking pictures myself. I also don't like just loading stuff. I, I personally right. like to take my own pictures, and those are the things that I'm actually putting up. So I'm doing my flower photography, or like you, because I do personal inspiration, I may actually, I'll actually do my, make my own personal inspirational quotes, and I will load them. But it's stuff that I'm actually doing myself, that I'm creating myself. So right. I also love to talk about, you know, the experiences that you're dealing with business owners and what you think the number one mistake that you see people and business owners doing in social media. <laughs> you and I discussed this a lot. I mean, <laughs> you and I have had long conversations about this. Richard and I have a lot of long discussions. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and uh, the number one mistake that I see, besides, uh, actually there's two of them. One is doing everything yourself because it's kind of hard to uh, run your business and be really, really active on social media at the same time. But the number one mistake I really see is broadcasting and not engaging. Now, they just, you know, some people, they'll put a tweet out there or a Facebook post or this or that, and people comment on it, and it just sits there dead. You know, I don't mind people using automated systems. I use some automated systems myself, which I get into in my coaching programs that Carly and I do together. We could talk about that a little bit later on. But I use automation to help engage. What do I mean by that? Now, I'm, also, I'm broadcasting on some things, but I'm also engaging. So if somebody says, hey, that's a really good tweet, or start, com start a conversation with me, a part, a part of that, I get a little update on my phone that says, hey, listen, you just had an at mention on Twitter or something on Google Plus or Instagram, and boom, I'm there immediately engaging with people, you know? Uh, I have a local marketing and SEO company that does some social media management, but I handle all my own stuff, okay? I handle all my own stuff. So I'm out there, you know, if somebody says comments on it or even just a smiley face, boom, I'm right there engaging with that person because they made the effort to engage with me. I'm making the effort to engage back and start a conversation. Something I learned from um, one of these social media experts, Kim Garst, who's really, really big on Google+. Plus. And she uses automation, but when somebody says something back, hey, I'm happy you like that quote. How are you today? You know, it's like, wow, you're starting an engagement. Because Carly and I, you and I had, we were at loggerheads at this a little while back, and you see this automated stuff, and you comment, and, I, and then boom, I'm right back with you. So you can see exactly how I do it. Because you can't be tweeting 24-7 a day. You have a business to run. You know, we all have business to run. We all have clients that we're working with. We can't physically do this 24-7. So some automation is good, but you need to engage, not just broadcast. That is the number one mistake that I see most business owners make and most social media, quote-unquote, experts or managers make. And you and I have talked about animation. I mean, not animation, automation. Yes. <laughs> so this is one of the things that he was saying that we locked heads on. So, and, and that's why I love the fact that he made a distinction. So I'm a proponent for not automation, and he made a distinction about what we were talking about, is I don't like people that use a constant automation, and that's what he was making a distinction about. It's one yep. thing to use automation to do all of your work for you, and I don't use automation I agree with him on automation to an extent, and that was what we were locking heads on. It's like I don't like people that use automation nonstop for everything or automation. They're having the person actually automate even back them for thank yous. So actually they're, they're doing none of the work at all. It, 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 everything's being done for them, so there's actually no engagement at all. And, and that's what we were – And I'm, so he made the, the distinction on where automation can be used and where we as human beings are engaging back with our fans, or the people that are actually following us and are seeking us to engage back with them. So there's a place and a time for automation. However, we as people, if people are actually engaging with us, have a responsibility to the people that are actually taking the time out of their busy schedules to engage with us. 
if you want to get customers to come to you, you know, you, you do have responsibility to engage with them. Yeah, it's social media is all about engagement. Is about uh, it's about a, um, a a big cocktail party. Now you imagine yourself at a cocktail party. There's little gatherings of people all over the place. You know, little little groups here, and you know people are start. You know, they go around. You know, talk to Circa about you know what they do and this and th you know they're talking about um, some po political stuff. They're talking about. Uh, business stuff, they're talking about social media stuff and this and this and this and this and one of the things that I really see the network marketing people, the MLM people really fail at this is uh, as soon as you connect with them on any network they're all of a sudden right in your face, buy my stuff I'm like I have no idea who you are buy my stuff well, well, you know, let's start some kind of engagement, great, buy my stuff I'm like going, there's just no if you did that at a social, if you did that at a cocktail party and, and you know you go around you know little circle and people talking about what you do. It's like, hi, I sell vitamins. Buy my stuff. It's like people want to skip the first date, the first kiss, okay, you know the the engagement and go straight to the wedding night as soon as they meet with you. You know I have plenty of people on social media that say, hey, thanks for, for connecting. I got a great I got a great investment for you. You know you want to invest in this one project? I have no idea who the heck you are, dude. You know, and this happens, you know, Carly, you know this, this happens all the time. And, you know, you, you have to create value in the marketplace before you're going to get anything back. Because you are, and make sure you write this down, you are being paid to the penny on what your value is in the marketplace. So the more you increase your value, the more you're going to increase your bank account. And you could do that in social media by putting out very, very good content. Um, and if you don't have good content of your own, you can find people who have great content, like Carly, and share that with other people. You know, obviously, you know, um, if you're in the dog training business, find out the gurus or the influencers in, in the dog training business, share their content out with your people. And you know what? These influencers are going to take notice and saying, hey, who's this person that's sharing my content all the time? They are going to notice. And you could tell very, very quickly on social media if somebody else is managing their campaign or, or if they're managing their own social media campaign. And you're tapping to the actual person, not to somebody on their staff. And remember, people are actually looking at you. They're checking you out. They want to know who you are. So remember on your walls, wherever it is, I don't care what platform you're on, whether it be Google, Twitter, or Facebook, share a bit of yourself. Let them see your personality. Like Richard and I are here, we're actually we're laughing a little bit. We're we're getting a little bit intense sometimes. We're actually having a little bit of a banter. People want to get to see your personality. They want to see a little bit of all sides of you. Show a little bit of your serious side. Show a little bit of your playful side. You know, they really want to get to know who you are before they do buy a program. Before they do get to do anything else with you, they're not just going to buy a program. They're not just going to invest any anything with you until they get to know, like he said, who are you? They're not just going to buy a product from you. They really do get want to get to know who you are. And so doing, I encourage people to get involved in multimedia. Do things like this. Do a podcast. Now, I'm also going to say beyond a podcast, do a video. People want to see facial expressions. They actually are, people are visual in nature. And I really encourage people to get involved in multimedia. It's such a wonderful thing to do. The other thing, I'd love for you to share, not just number one, but what are some of the other things you also see that business owners do? And I'm not even saying other business owners, but just in general, being involved in social media as both of us are in, what are some of the other things you also see people do that are some things that are going to detract from them getting business? I think um, some of the problems that I see with people, uh, businesses on social media, is overselling. What I mean that is always buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Gary Vanderchuk, uh, who goes by Gary V on, on Twitter, we all know him, the, the wine guy, um, he just came out with a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Okay, so you get value, value, value. Hey, if you like this, I got this over here, you know. So uh, Gary is great at that. Um, myself, I have a tendency of over-delivering content and not selling enough of my stuff, 
you know, we all learn from other people, uh, some, some of the professionals. So um, as opposed to people that always just like, you know, hey, you want to lose weight? Here's some before and after pictures. You want, you want your skin to be better? Here's some before and after pictures. And that's the extent of their social media campaign. It's just always selling, 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 you know, with social proof. What I mean by social proof is like, hey, this person got great results. You can get that too. Um, there's a book that I really love. It's called The Marketer's Bible. Well, I consider it The Marketer's Bible. It's called Influence by Robert Cialdini. Uh, you might want to find that on Amazon. That is a wonderful book for any marketer. And it's about, you know, one of the things he talks about, you know, giving value. You know, what kind of value are you getting for what you're doing? Um, so if you're in the dog training business, do what Carly says. Put out, you know, a series of very, very small two to three minute videos on certain things you could do as far as dog training is concerned. You're going to get some fan base. And, and Carly knows this. That's why she talks about video. Is when they see video, it's a different level. Audio they feel, okay, yeah, this person's got some great information, but when you see video, you see the, the facial expressions, you see the emotion of everything. People feel like they're, they're talking to the authentic person. They feel like they know you because you're on video. I've had a few people that have seen my videos and then they see me at a, at a seminar somewhere where I'm speaking, and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I, know, I, I just feel like I know you. I'm like, I never met you before in my life, but that's what social media is, you know? We get to engage with people, and it's cool that I'll engage with people on social media, and then I meet them at live events. Oh, you're that person. Oh, cool. You know, so you have an instant connection with these people, and no matter how low you are on the totem pole or how high you are on the totem pole in your marketplace, you'll be able to get some wonderful, wonderful contacts, and for business and even lifelong friends. But what Carly was talking about, uh, you know, they see more of you with the video. It's what I was talking about earlier is your authentic self. It's peeling away the, the layers of the onion, not to who you want to portray. It's like these reality stars that you see on TV. Well, that's not me. That's just the character I'm portraying on TV. Well, no, you're a douchebag in real life, and you're probably a douchebag on TV too, you know. That's why you're like that. That's not the character. Social media is totally different. Don't be the character that you want to portray. Be your authentic self, and you'll be surprised how many people are going to attach to your message and start drinking your Kool-Aid. And that's a very important thing of what he just said there. Be really sure that what you're putting out in social media, be the face that you're going to show everywhere. That face is the same face you're showing on social media, whether it be on stage, off stage, literally in bed, out of bed, on, in the supermarket, in the car, make sure it's the same face you're showing everywhere because let me tell you, they're going to know. Some, it's going to come back to bite you in the butt if you're showing one face in one place and a different face someplace else. So don't do it. Make sure it's the same face you show everywhere. And that going on from that, Carly, you brought up a very, very good point. Let's just say you're a good Christian person, very good church-going person. And on Facebook, you're liking all the pictures of all the hoochie mamas wearing hardly anything, that's not authentic you, unless you know the person or it's one thing. But, you know, I see these, uh, these good Christian people, and they, when you like a picture, it shows up in their feed, hey, Richard, like this post. So in that, that post, that reputation is attached to your reputation. So you have to be very, very cautious, very cognizant of who you're liking, what you're retweeting because their reputation now becomes your reputation and your brand. So be very, very cautious in what you do. And people don't realize that. It's just, it's, and that's why I go back to people just, I'm going to bring this topic up, buying fake followers um, or just people that are in groups that they, um, and all these different groups where you're sharing people's content just to share people's content or liking things just to like things. So what he's saying is very, very valid. So when you're just liking things to like them or retweeting just to retweet, people can see what you retweet. They can see what you like. And so when you're liking provocative things or retweeting things that are provocative, there's Google search engines. You know, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. So if your brand is one thing and you're doing something completely opposite, people are going to see that. So you really need to get really clear on what it is that you want to represent, what it is your brand is going to represent, 
because you are the face of that brand. You are your business. You are the face behind your business. Even if your brand is something XYZ, and your name is still behind that. So you are the brand. Let me just take this one step further, Carly, and you and I had this conversation about this. You have to be very cautious on what you post, that it cannot be taken in the wrong way. Right, Carly? Yes, absolutely. You, you, want to tell that, you want to tell the stories about the candle lights at the bath? Oh, yes, I'd be delighted to. So <laughs> a, a client, I, I, you know, I have obviously many clients, and a client of mine chose to post a picture of a bathtub with many candles around it. Now, this particular client happened to be a female. And that was a very innocent post. It was just like, ah, I, you know, beautiful day to relax. And, of course, a male person came, decided to write a little, oh, you know, and, and, and a sexual comment. And, you, you know, you have to understand, an innocent post of a bathtub with candles around it is enough to have someone write something provocative on it. So you have to, whatever you post, you have to think what you're posting. Another one is jokes. You may think a joke is very innocent. Now, mind you, Facebook is cultural around the world. What we may think is funny here may not be funny in Europe. So personally, on my walls, I don't post any jokes. And I don't post anything that is even slightly provocative. Because why do I want to have to go back to my wall and have to now delete comments? You know, when someone writes something stupid that's provocative on my wall. Why do I even have to even, I don't even want to have to even deal with that. So why even go there? So I don't post anything even slightly provocative. Not even, I don't even want to go there. Nothing with candles, nothing with bathtubs. Just be smart. Use your brains. Don't put anything on your walls that could even slightly trigger something like that. And I don't post anything overtly political. I don't want to have political debates on my wall. Now, do I have political conversations in my home? Sometimes. You know, do I have, you know, you just have to be smart. What you, what you do in your own home, what you do out with friends is an entirely different situation. You might have conversations about certain things. That's your private life. But in, in social media, what you put out there stays out there. What you think doesn't go somewhere does. People cut and paste. They cut and paste your conversations. They do screenshots, and it goes places. Don't do it. Why go there? And it was an innocent, innocent picture of a bathtub and candles. And my client didn't mean any harm. She had no ill intentions. She just wanted to relax. She had a hard day at work. That was all it was. And that's all what? it took to have a stream of nasty conversations on her wall. Yeah, I used to have, um, I, I think the nice word for saying it would be a douchebag uh, that followed me on Facebook that hit on all my female friends, all at the same time cutting, pasted, pasting messages to them. I know that because they uh, uh, Facebooked me and said, who is this guy? And it's like, and then, you know, my friends are fairly tight on Facebook, so they all talk to each other, so they all realize it was the same guy, you know, <laughs> going back and forth. And he would make, you know, comments on my wall. And I, I, again, this is a different perspective. I kept those, I didn't delete the comments. I kept the comments on my wall so people can see what he was really like, you know, of, of who to avoid, you know. So, I mean, again, Carly and I have a different perspective on how we do things. Uh, but you have to be very, very careful about this. You don't want to alienate 50% of your people out there. So why talk about politics? Why talk about religion? Those are two really, really big no-nos. I mean, if you're Joel Olstein, that's one thing. You know, but if you're, you're, you're Joe Smith, who just has an opinion on something, you know, you, and you're a business owner, you're going to lose 50% of your business. And we don't have the most stellar economy right now. So why would you want to alienate 50% of your potential clients? Keep things straight down the road, right in the middle, almost homogenized so you don't offend people. You know, find out the leaders of your field. Uh, you know, if you're on dog, again, I go back to dog training. Do they talk about political stuff? Do they talk about religious stuff? No, they talk about dog training, maybe, uh, maybe their kids and where they went on vacation or things like that. But they don't get into hot topics that's going to tick off a bunch of people. So stay smart when you do your social media campaigns. Speaking of that, what would a business do? Let's say they did get slammed online. How would you <laughs> consult someone to deal with that when that happens? Well, if you do any amount of business, you're always going to get your haters. Now, I always say never cater to the haters. 
And what I mean by that is you don't want to engage with people that are ticked off for one reason or another uh, online. So if they put, you know, if you're any kind of business, you know, you're going to be on some of these websites that just slam you. And that's going to happen. Uh, there's a thing called online reputation management. Uh, one of my companies, that's what, what we also do. We deal with mom and pop businesses, but we also do with C-level executives. And what these C-level executives are going to do, I don't know if I told you about this, Carly, but they get really, really nasty. So if you get a bunch of them that are fighting for this one job that's going to be paying, you know, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, they will anonymously, anonymously plan something bad about the other job candidates so they can get a job. Again, we have a very, very uh, rough economy. It's not as flourishing as it should be for one reason or another. So, you know, people are fighting for these jobs. So I have a, a different C-level executive type uh, business clientele for online reputation management. Uh, the problem is with um, uh, Google Hummingbird that just came out that update a, a little while back, you know, I saw a lot of the bad crap is actually posting back up closer to the top of, of uh, your Google uh, name searches again. And what I found out is that with uh, business owners, your name will get attached to your business. If the business is slammed, chances are your name is slammed. If your name is slammed, some, some chances are that your business name is attached to that. So uh, there's legal remedies that you can do, um, but there's a lot of what we call online reputation management, which is basically reverse SEO, search engine optimization, to put a bunch of good stuff out there that will rank well, that will push the bad stuff to page 2, to page 10, to page 20. And, you know, 99% of all searches are in the first two pages. So if you can get everything, any bad stuff off of the first two pages, you're going to be good to go. Because chances are, if you're looking for somebody, uh, looking for something, if you have, you know, 10 pages of good stuff and there's one bad post on page 11, chances are you're not going to lose a business deal because of some stuff. And there are websites that are out there that don't verify anything. They'll just post it and you can never take it off. So if you sue the person, Person. There's nothing you can do about that. It's going to be up there forever. So uh, the only thing you can do is just put good, good quality content out there to push all the bad stuff down. So we're getting close to our time. So I'd love for you to share, just for people to understand, it's a pretty comprehensive process, obviously. How long would it take for an average person to do what we've been talking about? Oh, in, in regards to social media or online reputation management? Or? No, and so your, your late system. So even the, the oh, the late process. system? Yes. Well, there are five surprisingly simple steps, but it doesn't mean simple means easy. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things, you know, t you know, that's why I have coaching programs and things like that, because even getting out of your mental, escaping your mental prison, for some people, they could do that in an, almost an instant, and other people it could take months or years to escape their mental prison. So uh, with social media... Uh, like, again, you can totally rebrand yourself in as little as 21 days effectively. So if you're an author, one of, the, one of the big questions I get from authors is, well, when should I start my social media stuff, my social media campaigns, because um, I have a book? Well, I haven't been, written the book. When should I start? Now. Well, I've already written the book. When should I start? Now. So <laughs> now is the perfect time for anything. Uh, you need to spread your message if you've already had the book that's already out. If you don't have a book out yet and you want to get your book out, you need to get a bunch of raving fans so when the book is released, everybody's going to, of, of those raving fans, are going to just buy your book in droves and tell everybody else about it and spread that message virally that, hey, Curly's got a book out, everybody go buy it. So the perfect time to start that is now. So in answer to your question, it takes about three weeks to rebrand yourself online. Perfect. And as usual, I know you and I could talk for a very, very long time. However, um, I think that we're probably going to let everyone know where they can find you. And this is also a podcast. So where can people find you if they want to find you right now? Okay. Well, you can go to my website, uh, themrblueprint.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Mr. Blueprint, Instagram at the Mr. Blueprint. You're kind of seeing how branding kind of works here. And plus, for all those listening, Carly and I—if you like both of our personalities—we're uh, actually starting a program together, uh, socialwemedia.com, where we got our coaching program together, and we're going to have this really, really cool video. It's going to be about one hour long uh, that gives even more explanations about social media 
who we are and how you can better help your business. So if you go to socialwemedia.com, you can get some more free training from that. Again, we're putting more and more value on the marketplace. Gee, it's almost like we're practicing what we're preaching here. Um, so you can find me at themrblueprint.com, at themrblueprint on Twitter, and also on Instagram. Well, as usual, I'm always delighted to have you on, and I'm sure we'll be having many more conversations, and, and it's just been a delight to have you, and I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with me once again, and I can't wait to have you on again. And um, for tonight, it is good night, and we wish everyone much blessings, and I look forward to our next conversation. So thank you so much, Richard. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And um, we put together a beautiful page with all of Richard's information, and delighted to have some feedback. And if there's anything else you guys would love to hear about, please let me know. And you've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can reach me, obviously, at carlylissathorne.com. Good night, everybody. Have a great one.